working. Recording is working now. So welcome everyone to this new session of the unit community hours. Before we start, uh, I guess that some of you are wondering if we are going to have a uni 2021 10. Uh, it's not the case because we want to make the code more stable and introduce the Python bundle that um, Victor is going to present in a few minutes. But with that said, keep in mind that yesterday, if I recall correctly, or maybe it was Wednesday, <laughs> I don't remember right now, we released an important security patch for a CBE. It's released to the patch repository. So the, the instructions to install it are slightly different because you need an extra repository if you never installed a patch before. All the details, they are at the Twitter message, at the website and of course i send that to the three mailing lists announce devil and users so let's get started the agenda for today is and let's change to the next slide prometheus the unit service discovery that is now upstream vitek is going to present that and then Victor will talk about plans and progress for the SALT bundle. And of course, we will have some time for questions and answers as well. So I, uh, if I can find how to stop sharing, otherwise Vitek, maybe you can do it for me because I don't really see the button when, when I'm sharing from Office 365. Or you can just start sharing. Yeah, I couldn't find it last time either. I just... Uh... Press sharing now and it's loading. Yeah, I can see the slides. Very good. Very good. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Vitek Bedek. I'm a software engineer at uh, SUSE and would like to talk about. Uh, Prometheus Uyuni service discovery, and in particular the, the process of upstreaming this, uh, which is what I worked on in the last last months. Um, so, short uh, short intro. What what is uh, Prometheus uh, service discovery? I I hope uh, most of you used uh, Uyuni service discovery already. It is included uh, in uh, uh, Uyuni um, project. Service discovery in general is a is a Prometheus mechanism uh, to automatically detect potential monitoring targets in dynamic systems, for example, in, in cloud systems. In Uyuni, uh, we we use uh, uh, API as a registry of uh, monitored systems and groups, and so Uyuni API gives us uh, the information about installed exporters, and so this information is used then by Prometheus to um, configure the monitored targets. So you can see at the uh, right uh, top uh, there is a Prometheus server. It uh, gets information from the Uyuni API at the bottom, uh, configures the targets and then scrapes these targets on a regular basis, like regular Prometheus scrape process. Uh, the data about the exporters is stored uh, in the uh, exporters formula. It is retrieved from, from, this, uh, from this data. Right. Uh, so as I as I mentioned, uh, uh, Uni Service Discovery has been included uh, um, already for for some long time. It has been maintained in the downstream fork. Uh, you can find the repository here. Um, the reason for that was that uh, Prometheus community at that time was not accepting any new uh, service discoveries. Um, um, they 
they were focused on on uh, different different tasks and wanted wanted to implement these first, concentrate all the efforts on on, on other uh, features they 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 needed. Um, so yeah, we we decided to to maintain this this fork, uh, but um, this was leading to to additional effort when maintaining uh, the the project and uh, installation. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we, we we thought it would be good to to um, to upstream this feature. Actually, the uh, the way how Uni uh, how the service discovery is implemented in Prometheus is very modular, so it's it's actually very easy to to upstream. Um, well. What were the reasons to upstream? I think I don't have to explain it in detail in this in this uh, uh, group. Uh, we are on the upstream project. Uh, so, f but but yeah, let's go quickly f about f through the reasons. First of all, the the code maintenance I mentioned already. Maintaining a fork is additional effort, and uh, we have to rebase the the code base every every yeah every time when when something changes upstream uh we have to build the package with all these changes and uh, also um working together with other colleagues who are using the same uh, package at SUSE is is uh, adding more effort code quality um the original Authors of of uh, Uyuni's service discovery are are good uh, good software engineers and they uh, can uh, write good uh, Golang code, but having other pair of eyes going through the review process uh, gives another view on the on the code. They are they are expert in Golang and in Prometheus, uh, so they also help to to make the code more consistent with uh, with the current Prometheus project so that everything looks uh, more consistent with other service discoveries and Prometheus as, 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 as itself. Then ease of use. Uh, now you don't have to install the, the Prometheus package maintained by, by SUSE, but, but uh, of course you, you, you can do this and you will have uh, all, the, all the functionality, but you can also just take the, the upstream work and uh, and use as it is then open source participation of course that's the that's the um, meaning of open sourcing the, the the projects that you'd get contribution so this this is actually the the clue of of this work and finally visibility so that uyuni is also um now listed in the official documentation of prometheus so it increases the, the the popularity and visibility of the project i hope now how the process looked like uh, the first of all the pre-requirement was the moratorium which prometheus community has lifted in november 2019 from that point they theor at least theoretically we're accepting uh, new service discoveries to the project. And um, after some discussions and also after observing how the uh, um, contributions were succeeding, there were two or three service discoveries added in the first year. We then um, discussed shortly uh, in, the, in the group and decided to um, uh, put some effort on upstreaming um, our work. And uh, so the first pull, pull request I've, I've submitted was in November 2020, and yeah, it was quite a long process uh, with, with several steps. Uh, and finally, in the last uh, pre release now in Prometheus 2.31, uh, it will be officially included it's now a pre pre-release um what were the concerns and and comment points in the review um 
first of all, there was a lot of uh, business logic hard coded in the in the service discovery code. The, the code was written very pragmatically just for the use cases, how how we are using this. But the, the core reviewers have pointed out that theoretically you can use it more generally uh, and, and you should not limit it to this just one use case. So, um, for example, we uh, we were focused on just one formula with exporters and we were getting information out of this. They pointed you could use your own formulas uh, installing different exporters and you would also like this information to be to be presented or you would also like to discover other services which are which offer native monitoring not not only uh, via exporters um, then there were some assumptions done about how the exporters formula looks like and it was very yeah um, tightly bound with, with the structure of this uh, formula. So we have generalized this uh, this structure. We now have a contract how how such formula should be built, but this is quite generic. Yeah, limited to exporters only. I have mentioned it already. You also have native native monitoring endpoints like many applications offer mon uh, Prometheus monitoring out of the box without the need of uh, installing additional exporters. So uh, service discovery should also be able to to discover these. And finally, the 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 set of uh, returned uh, labels was not generic enough. Right, and uh, we addressed all these comments, and these are the code changes which which had to be done, as I mentioned. That the, uh, I think someone needs to mute, but I hear some Spanish. <laughs> no, that was Italian, I think. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, right. Uh, we have uh, restructured the the salt formula for for exporters uh, to make it more uh, more generic. Uh, we now also moved. A lot of business logic, which has been in the original version of Uyuni Service Discovery to the Uyuni API code itself, and now have a generic uh, API call uh, called System Monitoring List Endpoints. Currently, it just uh, covers the same functionality which we had, so uh, it lists. Um, lists the um, exporters which are installed by uh, by all the formulas we have uh, we want to extend it to to also list the, the native uh, endpoints right and the last uh, uh, thing which we which we changed is the set of meta labels which are uh, returned by the service discovery and this is now included in the official documentation, as I mentioned. Uh, right, so uh, on this uh, slide you can see the list of labels which were provided by the downstream, by the, the old implementation, and now available in the in Prometheus 231. Uh, we have added some labels and they they correspond now to the general naming schema, which is uh, um, implemented in, in most of uh, service discoveries in Prometheus. Uh, for the end user to, to upgrade from, from the old implementation to the new one, you have to provide some, some um, translation mapping and uh, we can we can achieve this with uh, relabeling configuration. So um, here is here is uh, the example, which is also included in the documentation. How to how to map from the old to the new um, implementation of service discovery without uh, any change 
for the end user. So you can use the same Grafana dashboards to, to present the data implemented with the, with the old and new uh, service discovery uh, when you provide such reliable configuration. And uh, that's the one of the one of the points which are still uh, to do. We want to provide this relabeling configuration in the Prometheus formula. So uh, when you apply Prometheus formula, the the, the configuration will be available uh, immediately to you. So you don't have to actually do anything. It will be transparent for the end user. Um, still to do. We have to build the uh, package for for SUSE for the with the new version and drop the the downstream patch in it. And yeah, further work on the on the service discovery upstream. Uh, some of the uh, details which were already commented in the review, we want to implement them now in in upstream. Like for example, not dropping the 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 connection to Uyuni API when it's uh, established once. Right, the, the whole work uh, was uh, not just me, there was a couple of people who, who uh, helped and um, participated on, on, on this work. First of all, Joao, uh, who is the original author of, of uh, Uyuni Service Discovery and uh, helped me in the first phase of uh, uh, upstreaming with, with reviews and, and help on code. Johannes and then Silvio helped with reviews and uh, design work on the on the Uyuni API. Finally, Julio and uh, Brian from uh, from Prometheus uh, community uh, who helped on reviews. Julian has uh, tested uh, the code and helped with many many suggestions uh, without all this work the, the, the upstreaming would not be possible yeah and that's it from my side do you have any questions to any of these Doesn't look like this. Thank you very much. I hope yeah. you will enjoy this. <laughs> in any case, I think that yes, it was very interesting and it's very nice to see this example of collaboration between Uni and well, this is many of developers and uh, and the Prometheus developers and community, of course. And uh, yeah, well, I, I can fully agree with you that this will for sure is the maintenance of the Prometheus package and will, and will make things easier for us and will will also make things easier for us to include new Prometheus versions when needed because now we don't need to think anymore. So thank you very much, Vitek. And yeah, I agree with Johannes. Very, very great and nice achievement. Thanks everyone, thank you. Okay, so if Victor is ready now, I think Victor, you can start sharing the yeah, okay. slides. Hope you see my screen now. Yes, it's working perfectly. Thanks. Uh, I'm Victor. Uh, I'm from Moscow, and today I'm going to present you the uh, salt bundle and current status. Uh, first of all, I want to briefly uh, describe what the salt bundle is and uh, generally speaking a salt bundle is the let's say self-sufficient binary package containing a salt minion itself and additionally python to run it and python uh, required python models and libraries to run the salt inside this virtual environment from this single package and the goals of this project is to provide the ability to run this salt uh, to only one salt version for almost all the clients we are supporting and even if the client is not meet, meets the requirements for uh, the salt version we are providing the uh, python itself and python models in, in this single package and also we are 
providing the ability to run uh, not only one uh, salt minion on the particular system, but also to uh, make it possible to run uh, a regional salt minion and uh, this uh, salt bundle salt minion on the same system to give the ability to use, for example, uh, Uyuni, Uyuni in conjunction with the other uh, products which are using the salt salt minions on the systems managed. And uh, one of the uh, issues we have right now with the current uh, supported distros that um, the distros itself uh, is providing and shipping uh, different versions of Python. And uh, in in some cases it's impossible to uh, to build a recent uh, salt version against this Python uh, version uh, as, uh, for example, uh, Python 2 is already deprecated and uh, some of the uh, salt versions is almost in end of the life status. It's not supported by upstream uh, at least and we need to sw switch somehow to newest version of Python and uh, to eliminate the uh, requirement to uh, support outdated salt versions, we need somehow to move further with the newest version of the uh, salt itself. And uh, the opposite situation also possible when we are going to uh, register on the Uni servers some of the uh, distros. We have the salt minions on uh, these distros uh, shipped from the uh, from the distros itself. Uh, salt version is higher than we are shipping for with the Uni client tools. And in this situation, if we try to uh, bootstrap these systems with the uh, Uni, it will install the salt minion from a regional distro and uh, it could lead to some issues uh, just because uh, salt master is able to communicate the, with the minions uh, with the uh, version equal to the uh, salt in, in the master or lower with the lower version of this salt. And in this situation, uh, one of the solution is to have the, uh, as I said, uh, this unified uh, bundled version of the uh, salt with the everything uh, required for handling it inside. And in this case, we are providing the vent salt minion package it's the only single package with the Venusalt minion service inside. And additionally, uh, uh, we have a link to the uh, salt call for, uh, to inside this uh, virtual environment named Venusalt call. Uh, prefix Venf means that uh, this salt bundle is based on the Venjail script and uh, it combines everything to the virtual environment inside the uh, uh, one particular directory uh, under the USL lib event salt minion. And uh, some important points I need to uh, note here that bootstrap and salt bundle is possible uh, with either uh, web UI or bootstrap script. Uh, I'm going to show you this uh, in short demo after the main slides. And uh, Bootstrap script must be regenerated to use salt bundle package as the uh, there are a lot of changes related to the uh, handling when salt minion package instead of salt minion inside the script itself. And uh, if you uh, created this Bootstrap script sometime before, you need to regenerate it. And uh, Bootstrap repository itself should be updated to include the salt bundle package inside. Uh, if the Bootstrap script is not containing the uh, salt bundle package, in this case, uh, Bootstrap script or Web UI bootstrapping will select uh, original salt minion package and uh, use it as the uh, as the main minion on this system you are bootstrapping. And uh, uh, new, newly registered minion automatically should be bootstrapped with the salt bundle version of the uh, salt minion. Uh, in case of 
if you have a list of already registered systems uh, with the original salt minerals, uh, this system will not be automatically switched. Uh, it, they will stay at the original salt minion, but you have a possibility to switch to salt bundle with the uh, state. Uh, it already in the the states for Uyuni. And uh, what is the next steps? We, as Julio mentioned, we are going to release uh, Salt Bundle with the Uyuni 2021-11. And the other steps is to implement the Salt Bundle handling also for Salt SSH, just because uh, there are some cases when uh, some of the system has no Python installed uh, on the system itself, and in this case, it's impossible to bootstrap these systems with Web UI at all, or the Python version on the system could be uh, also outdated, and uh, Salt Stack upstream Salt already dropped the support of Python 2 uh, for Salt SSH also. And uh, the other point, uh, we are going to continue with the searching of updating salt bundle with salt. Uh, if you probably face some issue on updating salt, salt uh, minion with salt itself, uh, the issue is possible with the updating of the Python models or salt itself. It could uh, just uh, generate the trace back in the logs and uh, any side effects are possible in uh, salt bundle. It's almost smooth and uh, just need to restart the service itself and and it's better to uh, if you have uh, the updated version in the repository, it's better to update uh, salt bundle first and then all the rest packages on the system in this case. And uh, what is about demo? I'm going to show you uh, the procedure of bootstrapping uh, the system with Web UI and also with the uh, Bootstrap script. Let's start with the Web UI first. And uh, currently, I'm going to bootstrap the Raspberry Raspberry 10 and. While it's bootstrapping, let's switch to the terminal and run uh, the other system to bootstrap. Let's say, for example, if we have uh, we have the old repo for OpenSUSE, in this case, it will select, as I said before, the original salt minion will not use the salt bundle as it not uh, as it is not present in the bootstrap repo. Let's check. Meanwhile, I'm curious about one thing, Victor. What yeah. uh, client tools are you using for Raspbian thing? Debian no or client tools at all. Build? Yeah. No client tools at all. <laughs> only salt bundle. There's mm. only one single package inside the. Uh, oh yeah, well, repo. yeah. I guess that the right version, uh, the right question here is, uh, did you need to build a specific? A bundle for Raspbian 10, or is the one for Debian 10 Arch 64 working? Uh, it sh I think uh, original from Debian should work, but uh, there's a slight difference between the uh, some of the libraries used in the uh, in the uh, for at least uh, lib apt version uh, for. Uh, salt bundle it's quite sensitive in case of invoking the Python apt model and uh, I need to double check with the version of apt itself uh, but in general I think it could be used directly from the uh, Debian distro but in this case it's it was built against the uh, original Raspberry 10 repo and if you take a look on the uh, list of the installed models, you can see that this uh, salt minion itself, uh, salt dependent uh, 
uh, Python uh, files and uh, other acquired uh, Python models for, for it. But in case of bootstrapping the, uh, uh, the other oh, one terminal, sorry. In this case, we have uh, Fedora 34, and it should use only one single package to be installed on the system. And, and where it is? Oh. It was installed, or what? Uh, I think it was installed before. Let's just remove it. Yeah, but anyway, it tried to get only that package and nothing else. So yeah, it installs just when when sold minion in this case and uh, nothing else. And uh, let's check what's in web UI. Web UI is said that the system was bootstrapped already, and we see the Raspbian here. And the rest are still waiting for the WhatsApp. Yeah. And the other important important point I uh, also noted it in the presentation that if you have the system which is already registered and want you want to switch it to the Sol bundle, it's possible to do with the uh, with the uh, state. And uh, let's wait until it opens to the finishing onboarding and check how it goes. It's not getting there. And to not to waste time on copying the typing the comment or put it from the here yeah it's there and let's try to switch to solve bundle Uh, this state just copies the all the configuration of the original salt minion to the uh, configuration files of the uh, salt bundle and before it it installs the package itself and uh, configures to automatic run and stops the salt minion original salt minion after all the preparations and also this uh, state contains some extra par pillar par parameters to uh, clean up uh, old files from the original salt. So I guess that the packages will get removed as well, or how they going uh, to stay? Pack, uh, without these parameters, package will stay on the system, but if you want to remove the old configs and also remove the a salt minion package from, from the system, you just need to specify a couple of additional pillar parameters to the well in working the state apply. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You can just run uh, this uh, switching in two steps. Uh, it's not a good idea to run it in single step just because the you know, first step could fail on some point and it's better to provide the ability to revert to the original salt minion not to delete it on the on the first shot <laughs> yep. it takes some time well meanwhile what we can comment about the benefit of the python bundle is that for if we have anyone in the room that is using CentOS and the EPL repositories, maybe you will remember that we always have problems. I think it was only for CentOS 7, not sure if CentOS it as well, with 
Python 0 in Q coming from there and being a newer version that is incompatible with our salt minion, et cetera, et cetera. Well, with the Python bundle, there won't be such problems anymore, which is really nice as well. Yeah, now we have the salt bundle one instead of the salt minion available on the open suzu leave 15 as piece or uh, 15.3. And, so does uh, it put the configuration yeah. in a different directory? Yeah, uh, all the files are placed in different location than for for, for a original salt minion and just prevent this uh, overlapping of the files and uh, give the ability to run the sol original salt minion and uh, salt bundle on the same system at the same time. But for sure for different uh, uh, servers, masters and uh, uh, you need to be sure that you are not touching the same files to different directions in case of, for example, applying high states from different masters. <laughs> and other important point, probably for those who still uh, use uh, uh, traditional clients uh, in case if they are uh, using salt minion for different purposes, on the system and have to use the uh, traditional clients only because of it. And then Sol Bundle is also the solution in such case. And from the point of view of the uh, Uni server, there is no any difference between the uh, Salt Minion and Fangel Salt Minion. And I think. That's all. And please don't trust this release number. It's not true. <laughs> I have a quick question. Sure. Let's switch to the questions. Yeah. Very curious if you tested this with transactional systems. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, should not be a, a big problem. It's only about the, about placing, yeah, you know, the configs at the place where we can edit without rebooting, etc. But yeah, most likely will not be so so problematic. We will see later. Uh, I think it shouldn't be some issues, but uh, anyway, we need to test it for sure. Any other questions? If there are no further questions, you can still keep this slide because we go to the to the let's say general Q and A. So, okay. If you have any other questions about well about what you saw today or about anything that is in your mind, something you would like to know, something you would like to see in New Uni, whatever is in your mind, now it's the time to ask, and we will try to reply and help. Oh, sorry, I didn't notice, Silvio. Yeah, it seems you want to ask. Uh, yeah, actually, it's not an ask. It's uh, just a lame excuse because I don't have a presentation ready uh, for today. But I still wanted to uh, call interested people attention on the fact that we are working at um, continuarizing Uni. This is uh, actually becoming a reality. I'm, I'm working with that every day as of late. It's in the RFC stage, so we are experimenting and trying to come up with a decent technical description of what will actually happen. Uh, this is all in the open, so I will I will post the link of uh, the RFC that we are we are currently looking at. I think it's in a pretty good shape, so chances are pretty good that uh, it will be accepted and merged, and uh, we will start implementation soon. So if anybody in the community is interested in containers, um, uh, they are um, absolutely welcome to give a look and see, especially from the user perspective, if what we are proposing makes sense from 
from their perspective. Uh, otherwise, we're absolutely open to uh, take comments and, and, and perspectives into consideration. Um, as you see, the, the, this, this RFC document uh, title is containerized proxy, because that's what we're going to do first for a near um, um, yeah, um, simplicity uh, perspective. So we, we start with the easiest uh, thing to put together. And once that works well, we will probably have good experience and insights of the technology to then attack the biggest part, which is a server. Not that we are not working at that. <laughs> we are actually already working at that in, in, in bits and pieces. But um, yeah, the, the topic will, will, will come later because we can't, we don't want to eat more than we can chew. Um, so that, that will be the first chunk. Um, I'm not sure whether there's already any, any, any questions uh, from, from this group. I'm, I'm glad to take them. Uh, otherwise, see you in the RFC, I would say. I, I just saw the comment from Dominic in the uh, chat about the uh, uh, switching from salt SSH to salt bundle. In this case, we have a slight issue with the uh, reactivation key and uh, activation key specification. It's not yet done on the uh, Java side, and that's why currently it's only possible way to switch to salt bundle from salt SSH is to fully re-register the system, not, not to use the reactivation. But I think in future we will add this ability to, to smoothly switch from salt SSH to salt bundle. Any other questions, comments about the salt bundle, about containers, about anything else? Ah, I see something in the chat. Oh yeah, well, of course, as soon as we release the salt bundle, we will be happy to get all the feedback we can from you. And the salt bundle also means that it should be somehow easier to add more clients to Uyuni. So for example, Fedora is waiting for a long time. I know that. And uh, yeah, if people from the community wants to help, soon it will be the time because at least getting the Fedora onboarded and with the patches working should not be that hard. Maybe identifying automatically the operating system is slightly harder because in some cases Java changes could be needed, but otherwise we now have a pretty nice guide from Pau that maybe we will need to update by the way, Victor. Those instructions we got to Pau about how to add new systems, but it should not take that much and it's only about maybe changing some salt uh, states, uh, some shell scripts, a few specs, and then the new operating system should be able to work together with Uni. Oh yeah, uh, Donald, yes, the plan is to have it in 2021-11, yes, the Python bundle. Okay, so if there are no further questions, then uh, I would say that it's time to close the meeting and uh, yeah, sooner or later for every one of us, I guess it's time to start the weekend, the weekend as well. So yeah, thanks for attending. See you in one month for the next uh, Unity, Unity community hours, of course. Remember that we are available at Gitter, the mailing list. So feel free to reach us at any time. And see you very soon, I hope. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.
Ciao, ciao.